Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Welcome to another installment of Breaking the Audio Rules. This time, we're taking a look at one of the most common rules that we hear when it comes to mixing audio. Don't mix using headphones. Is it valid? Let's take a closer look. We're often told that to get good results when creating a mix, you need to use a great pair of studio monitors in a well-treated room. And certainly, using great monitors in a great room makes it easier to hear what's happening in a mix. But for many of us, this isn't our everyday reality. While we'd all love to have purpose-built, custom-designed studios, for many of us, we're working in spare bedrooms, basements, and other untreated areas. And it's increasingly common to work on the go, in coffee shops, during lunch breaks, on airplanes, and so on. Yet, we often hear that you shouldn't mix in headphones, that using headphones, you won't be able to get a good result that's transportable to other systems. In other words, if you mix in headphones, the danger is that the mix will only sound good in those headphones and won't sound as good when you listen on speakers in other environments. Now, the fact is, pros use headphones for mixing all the time with great results. Maybe they don't mix 100% in headphones, but headphones are used all the time by mix engineers. And speaking from personal experience, I did 90% of the mixing on my recent EP using earbuds and headphones in the Sweetwater Diner. At the end of the process, I took my mixes into the studio to give them a listen and to make a few final tweaks. And I found that the headphone mixes I created in the diner held up really well. Now, achieving this requires just a little extra care and attention. Here's what I recommend if you're going to be mixing through headphones. First, get great reference headphones. I don't recommend consumer-grade headphones or earbuds, which are designed to make everything sound great, but aren't necessarily accurate. And I also don't recommend headphones that are optimized for tracking, since they're designed for isolation and for musicians to hear themselves while playing in a session. I recommend going with open-back headphones for mixing. I find that the response is more even, and to me, they're more comfortable for long mixing sessions. For more information on this, check out my video on open versus closed back headphones at the link below. Another thing I like to do is to use at least two completely different set of headphones from different brands to get different perspectives on the mix over a few days. I actually have several nice sets of headphones that I like to rotate among as I mix. For example, one day I might mix on my Sennheiser headphones. The next day I'll give that mix a listen on my Focals or on a set of Shures or AKGs. And I find this gives me better results than doing everything in the same set of headphones all the time. I also recommend using a high quality headphone amp. While you can just plug straight into your laptop if it has a headphone jack, you'll get better, more professional sound quality using a dedicated headphone amp, particularly if you're using higher impedance professional headphones. To learn more about headphone impedance, check out my recent video on that topic. The link is below. Personally, I go with the Rupert Neve Designs RNHP headphone amplifier when I'm at home, and I use the Grace Designs M900 when I'm on the go. And there are many other great headphone amps out there as well. Or you could go with a compact portable audio interface to drive your phones. That works great too. You can also consider optimizing whatever headphones you're using with software designed for that purpose, such as Sonarworks Sound ID, which tunes your audio so your headphones can serve as an accurate reference. Or you might use Waves NX, NX Oceanway Nashville, Abbey Road Studio, or NX CLA, which create a virtual control room in your headphones and makes them great for referencing. So choosing the right headphones, using a great headphone output to drive them, and considering software optimization can be a big help in getting great mixes with headphones. But there's a lot you can do beyond the gear to ensure that you'll get good results. Here are eight tips for getting great results when mixing in headphones that I've used myself. I found they all work really well. First, get to know your headphones intimately. You'll want to listen to a ton of professionally mixed music in a wide variety of genres on your headphones so that you know their response really well. How do they handle low frequencies? What about high frequencies? How's the mid-range clarity? How's the dynamic response? Listen for depth in the mixes. Where effects such as reverb sit? How wide the panning feels and so on. Second, be careful with the volume level in your headphones. This is an issue with studio monitors as well, but in headphones you can quickly fatigue your ears and more importantly damage your hearing by listening too loud. Our ears' response changes as volume levels change, so set the volume at a comfortable level for long-term listening, which may be quieter than you might expect, and then try to stick to that level as the mix progresses. It's easy to let things get louder and louder as you add EQ, compression, and limiting, so be conscious of that volume escalation over time as you mix. Third, as an adjunct to our last tip, with headphones it's even more important to take frequent breaks than it is when mixing with speakers. I try to take the phones off at least every 30 minutes or so and let my ears recover and recalibrate a little bit. Once your ears start to fatigue, you won't be able to make good judgments about sound quality and balances. Fourth, be careful of what I call forest for the trees syndrome. With headphones, we can hear every detail so clearly that it's easy to get caught up with and overly concerned with the tiny details and miss the big picture of balancing the mix and getting the overall sound so that it works well. It's easy to miss the forest for the trees, as the old saying goes. 
Now I like to break things up into a prep stage, and I did a video on prepping a mix that's linked below, where I'm dealing with getting everything set, edited, cleaned up, and ready to mix. After the prep stage, I'll take a break, usually at least overnight, and then I'll come back for the second stage, which is the actual mixing stage. At this point, I should be able to focus on just the balancing, the EQing, adding effects, adding automation, and so on. I'm not worrying about editing or any of that kind of thing. I'm just mixing. My fifth tip is to up the odds of a great mix by using referencing which means comparing what you're hearing. My favorite way to do this is to occasionally play the mix back on speakers so you can hear how things are coming together. Sometimes the biggest problem we face with headphone mixing is that the mix sounds great in those phones, but only on those phones and not anywhere else. Try to find some other environments to hear your mix, especially over speakers. I also recommend comparing your mix to pro mixes of songs in your genre. AB between your mix and the pro mix. Taking into account mastering, is the EQ similar? Is the clarity the same? How does your mix stack up? And sixth, be careful with low end. Getting great response out of the tiny speakers and headphones and certainly in earbuds and in-ears takes some real technical wizardry on the part of the manufacturer. I mentioned getting to know your headphones really well and this is certainly true with low end response. Pay careful attention to how much low end you're adding into your mix, particularly very low frequencies, which may not be accurately reproduced by the headphones. My seventh tip is, as with the low end, be careful with ambience and effects. Our perception of depth and space can be different in the sealed environment of headphones, so it's easy to make a mix too wet with reverb or to add too much delay or echo. Now, our tip about referencing will help you be aware of this, but I find that I usually need to dial in slightly less reverb and delay than I think I need to based on what I'm hearing in the headphones. Our eighth and final tip is to be careful with panning. As with low frequencies and reverb and ambience, headphones can tend to change our perception of the stereo field because we're sealed in there and it's easy to wind up with a mix where everything's panned too wide, which can result in less punch and excitement in the overall sound. Certain things, of course, are going to want to be panned all the way out, and just like with any other mix, you're going to want to position things where they need to be. But take care with how much you're pushing way out to the outside. Overall, the panning you're hearing in the headphones probably won't translate quite as well once you start listening on speakers. So use referencing, as mentioned before, and be aware of where you're placing things in the stereo field. So there you have it, a whole ton of tips for breaking the rule about mixing with headphones. Of course, we all know that mixing with headphones isn't quite the same as mixing with great monitors in a well-treated room. But that doesn't mean you can't get great results mixing on headphones. It just takes the right gear and a little extra care as you're working. Thanks for joining me for this installment of Breaking the Audio Rules. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.